Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our Team Dovetail Live tonight for a special episode. This will be one of the first and hopefully a continued series um, that we're going to do. Um, tonight, we're going to be checking in. We're only going to spend about 10 minutes, 15 minutes tops um, with uh, our current U.S. Uh, singles national champion and uh, member of Team USA, Rocky Carson. He'll be joining us. Um, Tonight's topic is going to be um, injury prevention. Um, I don't know if some of you know or not, but um, Rocky experienced a little bit of a back strain, and we're going to let him talk about that. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead and get right into it and see if we can bring him in. Rock, are you there? I hear you. Hey, good. Good to see you, man. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks for uh, taking the time out tonight. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to doing this with Team Dovetail and uh, – all that, uh, all that we get to do for racquetball too. Nice. Yeah. So, um, you know, we were talking earlier today and, uh, um, you know, I was thinking, you know, maybe we could try to do something to help the players. And I suggested, Hey, you know, maybe we do like a, a video, um, and maybe you can maybe show some exercises, but you had an even better idea. You, you know, you said, Hey, look, you know, some people may not know her or not, but you know, you had a little bit of a back strain at the U S open and you thought it would be really important to talk about injury prevention. So uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, what, what, you know, what made you think of that and, and, and about, yeah, no, the in, about the strain? No, totally. I've done a lot of videos for Racket World. I think a lot of people get to watch them on, online, but not always getting asked questions, kind of like going through it all. I do a video from my perspective and what I do, but I really enjoy doing, uh, being able to answer, doing, doing a little bit more of a Q and A kind of session. And so, Obviously, you get to be the the question guy, but um, for myself, at the U.S. Open, played was playing great ball. I played uh, um, Edwin Gracia. I, I always say it wrong, but from Guatemala, great player. Won that match in the 16s. That was a Thursday match in the morning. Ended up playing another tough match that night against um, Adam Ania, who was playing great ball. And mm -hmm. I was actually felt really solid in the way I was playing, serving well. Finished the match and uh, I could definitely feel my back tightening up. It was uh, it was tough and woke up the next morning and it was in a knot. And that was after having an ice bath the night before. Uh, so got in there, got an ice bath in the next morning to, to loosen it up. And it actually loosened up quite a bit. But I could definitely feel the rotation, um, the mobility of doing things on the move. Uh, I definitely wasn't doing the same, the, the same movements as I was the day before um back backhand forehand it was it was definitely like a three-quarter swing or three three-quarter rotation and it really was uh making it difficult to not just hit the ball hard but also execute shots um and stuff so um those things are going to happen that's part of what we do we beat ourselves up that's what we love doing as athletes and stuff it's it's like our our dream to uh get in there and push ourselves to the limit and see how far we can push and, uh, and it's, that's what makes it fun for us. And so all that being the case, uh, a lot of what I was thinking with, with tonight was, Hey, let's take what we have right now in my current situation and talk about, you know, I've had a pretty long career. It's been over 20 years as a professional athlete in the racquetball world. And what are the things that I've been able to do to help me kind of sustain staying on the court and stuff, because you're not always going to feel your best but how do we get the most out of us every time? What's your background in training? So, you know, I came from, uh, my dad played racquetball. He also owned clubs, but he also lifted weights. So I grew up playing racquetball. I played other sports as well as he had me in the weight floor at an early age. Hey, this, this is how you lift weights. This is how you do things um, properly. And so I grew up at a young age, probably 12, 13, 14 years old, lifting light. It wasn't something that I was going to go and push myself hard, but he gave me an understanding of how to lift weights and what it does for your body and how it helps take your game or tell it, take your athleticism to another level, um, to become more explosive. I always look at it in five different ways. We want to be more balanced, balanced as athletes. We want to be able to be balanced on the court, but we also like, you know, if you're working your arms, you want to balance your biceps and your triceps. Um, you don't want to just work one and not the other, but we want to be more balance. We want to be more explosive. We want to have better muscle endurance so that we last longer. Mm -hmm. We want to have better flexibility. And a big thing that we don't realize is we want to have better recovery. So what are the things that I do on the court and off the court 
that allow me to do those things. Um, and so those are the things that I really focus on when I'm on the court as well as when I'm off the court. Can we re rewind a little bit back to the U S open and experiencing an injury? Cause there's probably some people watching tonight that may experience the same thing. You know I mean? Guys were competing. Um, but to go back to your injury. So, um, when that happened, I mean, what immediately pops into your head? Well, start, start the recovery process. You know, you finish them, you finish a match. It's all about recovering for the next day. And so often we forget about that. Um, for myself, a lot of people, and you know, I'm going to go into what I do as an athlete, not what, you know, you hear from this person or that person or what I think you should do, but it might help you what I do. It might help you what, with what you do. Um, but a lot of times I don't stretch before matches. I warm up and I try to warm up well. All right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. a big part of it, I stretch after I let my body kind of loosen up, cool down uh, from that. And then I'll go in there and, to, and try to go into a hard stretch where it allows my body to, to, or doesn't allow my body to tighten up too much so that the next day when I'm waking up, I'm not waking up in a, in a tight situation, my back's tight or my, my, my body's tight or something like that. There's going to be times when you finish a match or you finish whatever you're doing and you strain something. There's no getting around it. Mm -hmm. But how do I recover in the best way possible? Um, I, I do believe ice, ice baths are some of the best um, therapies that will help with recovery. It, it really does take a lot of inflammation. It helps the body reboot a little bit. And uh, it for, for some reason, it always gives me a great, um, almost like a... a a release in in some of those uh achy achy joints and allows me to kind of just you know feel like i'm i'm new again so for like common sports injuries you know like bruises and muscle strains joint sprains so usually obviously rest ice compression the elevate the, the rice method yeah i really you know what and for myself a lot of people they'll say hey rest you know if you don't want to i think rest is a very key ingredient to um to you know getting getting through a i don't want to say totally an injury but um a an issue a, you know or pain you know i got a i got my back or i got my I, I got a quad that's feeling this or a little bit of a pull i always believe for myself what's worked best for me is to go light and to really make sure i'm engaging those muscles to engage engage them so I can get new blood into them. And then the ice helps get the inflammation out. So when I'm doing, if I got a quad, I might go in there and do some lunges or leg extensions. If my mm -hmm. quads are, uh, if I got a small tear, get in there, focus on that, go light. Don't do a ton of reps. I'm not there to push it and, and take it to the next level. I'm there to recover it, help give it an opportunity to, to get some new blood in there, function, I don't want to just totally put it off to the side. I want to, I want to give the, those muscles an opportunity to engage and to recover in a light manner. So I'll, I'll use those. And then usually some, some part in the day or immediately afterwards, I'll probably hit, hit up the ice machine or you can pull out an ice pack. We're getting some comments that are flowing through and I want to get to those in a second, but I just have a couple of questions because, um, on the injury part, <clears throat> what about non-injury? Like you come off the court, right. you didn't experience an injury. Is, is there, do you still ice? Do you still rest? I mean, what do you do? Yeah. You, you know, we all have a routine. I think definitely stretch, um, icing. I, I don't know if I'd say you need it. it. It definitely helps. But what you're talking about is something that I think is so commonly, um, that, that, that happens so often that you feel like, Oh, I'm okay. I'm okay. Where you prepare for that stuff is way before. I go and prepare for getting on the court and stuff like that way before I do, um, you know, go, just get into a tournament. I'm in the gym. When I do a lot of my exercises, a lot of the times you're going to talk to a normal trainer. Hey, stay in the range of motion right here, right here. I'll overextend things often. And what I mean by that is I'll do, if I'm doing like push-ups or something, I want to go extra deep. I want to be able to fill it in my shoulders. There's certain parts of my body that I want to strengthen a lot around um, the joints around the knees. Obviously, our knees are important. So I want to strengthen all the muscles around those around those joints so that the joints not taking so much of the impact, because the moment those get tired, the moment those get um, pushed to the edge, those muscles. Now you're putting more 
strain on the joint. And we want to keep the muscles doing the work and not the joints. The shoulders, another thing. When, when we do that, we want to make sure that we're strengthening our back so that we strengthen the back of the joints. We want to make sure that we're strengthening our shoulders. We want to make sure we're strengthening our chest so that we're well, well balanced all the way around that joint so that when we take that awkward swing, we're not just all of a sudden weak in a certain area. But when I'm doing those things, I'm not just doing a, a normal, let's say if I'm doing flies, I'm not just doing a normal fly. I'll overextend it because when I take that really tough forehand that's way back here where, hey, shoot, I felt something tweak there. My body's common. It's a, it's a, it's used to that. That's a, that's a common movement for my body. So I want to make sure that I'm using that and, and performing off the court, on the court, routinely in that way so that my body's uh, you know ready to to deal with that kind of stuff okay so i want to run through some questions really quick i know we only yeah. said 10 to 15 but i i, I just Let's knew go it through it quickly then everybody loves hearing from you so here we go uh mike kinkin asks how do you stretch before a match yeah, like i said before i don't do a lot of stretching before a match if i feel like i got some pain i'm going to stretch prior to a match three hours before, usually I try to go into a tournament feeling about as hundred feeling as close to hundred percent as possible. So I'll rest a day or two, or maybe three days prior to a tournament. Not a lot of stretching before most of it happens afterwards. I do a hard warm up. I, if you're struggling with warming up, getting your legs, um, you know, feeling like they're engaged when you start a match, go in there, do some lunges, get some deep lunges. If your knees are tired or if they, if they're stiff, if your legs, if you wanted to get life cycle, five minutes, you don't need to do a lot. Mm -hmm. And then I'll do, you know, you get in the court. Now you're hitting with a purpose. And so when you hit, you're hitting hard. So it could be fair to say that the, that the, the stretch could be in the, in the warm up on the on-court warm up. That's, that's it, it, that's where you're doing you, your, your stretching, you yeah. know, the, the, you know, the, the, that's what I believe is works best for me at least. Okay. Next comment. Steve Castleberry says some players use compression. Do you use compression? I do on my arm. I do like it on my arm. I feel like it's a little bit of warmth. Um, I got my dovetail uh, arm sleeves. You're going to see me wearing them almost all the time. I feel like it, it helps warm the arm up so you don't have to warm it up as much um, with swinging and, mo you know, keeping it going. Uh, as well as um, on the knees, if I feel like my knees are a little bit achy, I'll throw them on the knees. Uh, as much as I've had knee pads on my knees uh, in the days, Alvaro and I, Jack, uh, you know, we, we laugh about it because um, we've been on tour for so long, but we call them our knee warmers. And the, but that compression gives you that stability and it also gives that warmth and allows you to feel a little bit more com comfortable and confident in that. I have to share a comment one year at the U.S. Open. <clears throat> Both of you guys had just got done playing and you were down on the floor there and you had your towel and your ice bags. And I kind of walked around the corner. And I saw it and Alvaro goes, looks like a hospital, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that's alvi and i but hey you got to look at him look at my careers we're very fortunate to be able to play our play the game at this high of a level for that long and i know for myself um a lot of the stuff i'm talking to you guys about right now is why i'm still doing it okay a few more questions um age <clears throat> how much yeah. does age put you either at a greater or a higher risk of, of sports injury. Yeah, no, you know what? I don't know if it's so much age. I think definitely I've, I've noticed my body transform over the years from 20 to, to 30 and from 30 to 35 and maybe 35 to 40. And now I'm, you know, a couple of years older than that or a few, but I think it has to do with the recovery. I beat myself up at tournaments when I was younger. And when I was 20 years old, I would actually feel some of the most pain I felt at 20 years old than I did at, at any time in my career, because I don't think my body was used to it. And then I acclimated into it at 25 to 30 and then 30 to 35. I feel like my body is starting to kind of acclimate to the beating and the pounding that I had. So I wasn't getting as many like tears or micro tears or strains in my muscles. Um, and my arm was actually acclimated to it. So I wasn't getting as much um, elbow or shoulder pain problem was is over those years i'd had all those little strains in there and i have micro tears and stuff in my shoulder and and in, in different parts of my body and i've had a couple minor knee surgeries it adds up so it's a different way of of doing that and obviously i've been consistent on my play not everybody has been so 
the biggest thing I notice at 43 now is I definitely don't recover as fast. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when I was younger, that back strain might have been done, might have been fine the next day. Um, I didn't feel good. I haven't felt good um, for the last week and a half, two weeks, and or since I have it. I'm icing my back. I'm, I'm going to go in after this. I'll go and do a little bit of icing. I had a um, lacrosse ball in the car today, shoving it in the back seat, up against the seat. I love that. Working all those parts as I'm driving. You, you know, can use that uh, thing anywhere, on a wall, yeah. on the floor. And and it, it actually gave a lot of relief to uh, the tightness in my back. So yeah. I'm trying to always activate it in some way to, all right, how do I, how do I get some, you know, get it to respond yeah for those of you that don't know just to give you some context it's like a super hard rubber ball and you can buy them you can get them on amazon you can get them almost right. anywhere they're called kind of commonly known as a lacrosse ball and uh they're they're awesome i love mine okay uh joanne has a question and she says how hard is outdoor on your knees especially yeah. cement yeah no you're gonna definitely feel um outdoor racquetball more in your joints uh than you are indoor racquetball um, a good cord on indoors is going to take a little bit of the of the pounding away, and it's going to have a little bit more cushioning in the built into the floors. Um, outdoors, you you're taking it on the joints. So the nice thing about outdoors, I haven't played outdoor racquetball since uh, in about five six years, and that's the last time I did was uh, I singles, I should say singles outdoor racquetball. Last time I did was when I tore my meniscus on my left knee, and I said mm -hmm. I don't know if it's worth. Uh, the pounding that my knees took on on that and it took a, a while for that to recover and um i uh, had a uh, meniscus tear had surgery a little while after that and um, i said do i want to feel like that again and stuff and i've had a couple I actually had a meniscus tear again um about two right before covid and so i went into covid with a with a recovery plan and i guess i got a long recovery plan from that but um those two injuries mainly the big one outdoor singles really did take a take a you know a toll on that knee and um it's you're going to feel it in your joints most people are playing double so you're not running as much as fury mm -hmm. singles and doubles player and stuff like that so any tips amir amigo asks can you ask ask to comment on outdoor courts in vegas any tips any tips well you know, be, pre <laughs> be prepared to make adjustments because you're scared there's a lot of funky bounces but when you when you're playing in, in Vegas, the nice part about Vegas for an indoor player is it's a smaller court in the sense that you don't have the height of the ceiling compared to when you're playing in 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 California. You're not having to hit as many overheads out of the air. So if you're not comfortable with that, which most indoor players aren't, you're playing most of it shoulder high and below. So it allows you to kind of get in your strike zone where you're comfortable with. Where what you're going to get out there is you're definitely going to get. Um, that lateral movement and you're going to have to make sure that you're covering forward. Um, you know, the tips that I say, you know, when it comes to Vegas, keep the ball in, you keep the ball in for, for guys that are just learning how to play. You're going to give yourself a great chance to win. You don't, you know, we've all been there. Can you hear me, Leo? I'm not hearing you. There we go. We got you. Uh, right. One more, uh, com a couple more questions. I'll let you go, Rock. Um, Chris Turner asks, um, do you take any natural or anti-inflammatories? Uh, <laughs> that's a great one, Dave. A couple of the players know, hey, I'm going to always have my Advil on me. I, I usually take Advil before any pro match. Now, when I'm training, I almost never take Advil. I want my body to talk to me. I want, I want it to tell me what it's feeling how it feels and stuff like that. But when I'm at a tournament, I don't want to feel a ball hit me. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to feel, I want to be able to go through that match and feel as little as possible and focus on playing rather than pain. And um, so I'll take, you know, a couple Advil before a match, before any pro match. Um, but when I'm at home, I want my body to talk to me. I want it to let me know, hey, this is what's happening. This is what it's feeling and stuff like that. So those are what I take. Um, it, you know, natural infla uh, inflammatories, you know, it, when I really do need to get on top of, you know, my body feeling like I need to, you know, kind of cleanse it out, I'll do it with the diet um, and really clean out my diet to cut out. Like if I got tendonitis, it may not get rid of it, but it will help it. Um, if you have swelling in the joints or something like that, 
a good diet will definitely help. Uh, got another question from Chad. Sorry, Chad Bailey asks, how much longer will you play professionally? Oh, man. I love doing this. I mean, I've had the opportunity to play racquetball. I, you know, I thank my sponsors with uh, Dovetail and Head and Rollout and Racket Rolled. I've had some of the greatest support the sport's ever had. Um, and so I look at that and I think I'm living a dream. Why would I want to stop doing it? I'm loving it. They give me the opportunity to make enough, uh, make a living doing it that I don't have to worry about, Hey, do I want to do it or not? And I think, uh, where it comes down to, I've had, I had a horrible tournament this last week and, uh, I felt like I, um, you know, I, I just really showed up poorly. But I think I also know, understand why he showed up poorly. Um, and we're going to have those. I think every player has that. I don't want to have that consistently. If I can't do that and perform at a high level, um, the frustrating thing is I know at times I'm playing good enough ball to win tournaments. And I know what it takes to win tournaments. Um, it's just sustaining it and stuff. So it's, uh, I think part of it is, you know, you know, maybe I'm not recovering as fast. It might be. But I think part of it is taking that time off from COVID really, I didn't really compete in indoor racquetball and I wasn't pushing hard. So I feel like I'm still kind of getting in a groove. Um, I don't see myself retiring from full-time, from, from pro racquetball anytime soon. I may not play full-time, but I don't see myself retiring from it. I love this too much. I love you guys. Nice. All right. A couple quick things. Uh, Next tournament, obviously, for you could be they playing with Lalo and the pros. Looking forward to that, Kane. Unfortunately, uh, I think uh, may have hurt his calf or Achilles. And I, I think he's just going to try to recover it, and I think he's going to be smart about it. So I think um, I would have done the same thing. And we'll hopefully we get to see him out there soon, and uh, I get that opportunity again. Looks like Suds is also looking to play some doubles with the comments there. He's <laughs> locked in and watching the Yanks, but wants to know if y'all. Yeah, Y'all are playing doubles in Vegas. Oh, man. I, 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 I'm already signed up for three events in Centurion and, um, and some uh, CPRT doubles. So, you know what? I got to be smart about this. Um, I think uh, it's obviously an honor to get asked by uh, Sudsy, but it's also one of those things where it's like I got a tournament in Florida the week after. Um, Dovetail how open. Much ball, how much court time do I want to be out there? Is it smart for me to be out there that much? Yeah, so right after uh, three wall ball, you'll be in Sarasota for the Dovetail Open, November third right. through the sixth. That'll be looking fun, forward huh? to that. Yeah, yeah. Well, Rock, I think I'm gonna go ahead and let you go. I know we only said 15 minutes, and I knew it was gonna go more because everybody loves hearing from you, man. And thank you so much. It was a great idea. I know it was last minute, but it was very informative. Um, any parting words before we we say good night? No, thanks for having me, and I look forward to doing more of these with you guys. Uh, we'll we'll hit up different topics and. Uh, and hopefully uh, um, answer some questions for people that want to get to know some of these different things that I've used in my career and stuff. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks, everybody. Thanks, Good night. Rock, we'll see you soon, and uh, see you guys in Vegas. Yep. Thanks, Dovetail, right here, right there. Thank you, you guys. You know it, baby. Love it. See you. Good All night, right. everybody. Bye -bye.